Hi, I'm Rick the Pilot Teacher and today we are at SEI Industries. These guys make the bright orange Bambi buckets that you see being carried under helicopters on every forest fire around the globe. So come with us and we'll get to see how they test these fantastic, ingenious devices. So here we are with Mark, we're at SEI, and uh, Mark is going to tell us all about the Bambi buckets that SEI make. Okay, so this Bambi bucket is a 530 gallon bucket. So this is going to be carried on a, a fairly large uh, aircraft. Yeah. And um, we make these buckets in a number of different styles uh, with the, the valve mechanism. The bucket itself is consistent across them. It all uses a heavy duty fabric. Yeah. Um, same type of. Uh, stainless steel lines, etc. The construction is very consistent. Okay. Um, what the difference is between them is the actual operation of the valve, which lets the water out. Okay. So the original design, the legacy going way back 30 plus years, is uh, what we call an utter valve. And so it's basically just a tube that sort of comes out, it's one shot, yep. the water comes out, and it resets. So and basically you press the button, all of it goes. All of it goes, you have no other choice. Um, this is a more modern design. This is our currently our latest design called the Bambi Max okay. uh, valve. And so this valve, it has a tubular design. And so you can open and close it as many times as you want. Okay. Uh, so the big advantage for that is uh, a couple things is you could split your water load over multiple fires. Yeah. Uh, but the most useful thing for a lot of pilots like is the fact that you can pull the bucket out of the water and then you can release water and adjust the load that you take on for your fuel cycle. Right, okay. So you make yourself way more efficient on your yeah. fuel cycle. So basically when you're full of fuel, you can make this lighter and then as your fuel burns off, you can just exactly, keep more and more exactly. water Exactly, and the pilot basically just would do that by bleeding water off um, and we can just watch that for a second. Sure. So we'll say, imagine we've got a full load and, and we, we were pulling out and we found we couldn't quite lift it. You know, so we can just, you know, let a little water out, let a little water, and we can, as little as we want, you know, and you can do that an infinite number of times. So basically, as long as you press in the button, that valve stays open. Yep. So you want a, a little bit out, you just click it. If you want a big, you just give it yep. a longer press. And as press. soon as you release the button, it closes. Think of it like a water fountain. Press the button, water yep. comes out, release it, water stops. Okay, perfect, perfect. So, so that's the, the design of, of this valve. The, the other ones, you just press one button and... It all comes it out all in one shot. Out. You don't have a choice. Okay. So that, that's your two big advantage. Being able to split the load and being able to shed the load and adjust your load to suit your helicopter. Um, if, and if you had looked at a, an older style, like the Utter style bucket, yeah. you'd notice on the bucket uh, what we would call a uh, cinch strap. And think of it basically as a belt. Yeah. And you basically pull that in. So if you were in a situation where you couldn't quite lift it due to atmospheric conditions, altitude, etc., yeah. you might have to cinch the bucket down right. and not be able to carry as much load. Um, and of course, you don't want to get in and out during your fuel cycle and change the cinching. It's yeah. not the fastest thing to do. So this, you don't have to do that. And you'll notice there's no cinch strap on this bucket. Okay, gotcha. So All the right. cinch strap basically limits how, how full the bucket gets when you dunk it basically. Exactly. And and the other disadvantage with the cinch strap is it also turns the bucket from this nice spherical shape into this kind of weird hourglassy yeah. shape sometimes. Yeah, I've seen it some of those. might not fly as nice, mm -hmm. etc. So that valve inside then, is it basically just sitting on like a seat and then when you press the button it just pulls up off the seat like a, exactly. like a, a plug in a Yeah, in exactly. A, in a we, can, we can raise it up and you can take a little a look at that if you want to see that. So you can see, oh, actually I'll lower it down just a little bit. And if I open and close it, you'll be able to see that oh, opening yeah, yeah, and yeah. closing like that. Yeah. So that's obviously dumped, dumped over, the, over the fire now, so how is this refilled? How does the pilot go about okay, doing so that? Okay, so what the pilot's going to do is he's going to come down he's going to dip the bucket now he can open the valve as well simultaneously which will help it dip doesn't need to okay but i'm going to just do open the valve a little bit it'll help it dip a little faster so if the water's deep enough he's going to get a full sinking of course if the water's not that deep he might use need to use forward motion etc right okay kind of like yep. pull it through the water and then we're going to pull it out and again there's a real art to this as you would know if you once you get the hang of it yeah you can get a nice full bucket every yeah. day 
Yeah, because depending on how fast you pull it out depends on exactly. how fast she like gets. When we do this here, um, the first time you do it, if you don't know how to run the hoist, the speeds, or the right depth, yep. you'll pull it out and you won't get it full all the time. <laughs> and it's just it's a little bit of an art. And yeah. again, a good pilot, it takes a bit of practice and yeah. they can... Yeah. They can I found that with the A-Star sometimes, especially if you're heavy on fuel and you want to keep the cinch open a bit, you can dunk it quick to not fill it as much and right. then you can fill it slow or pull out slower as your fuel burns off yeah, and you can exactly, pull more on exactly. it. Exactly. Okay, okay, so now we can do like say a, a, a couple of dumps here. So we could say, oh, I want to split this bucket in, you know, thirds or something. And gotcha. And then we've, we've moved to the next kind of spot fire. Yeah, move on to another spot. And we can let whatever else. Left in there. Um, so that feature really is most efficient uh, when guys are at mop up at the end of a fire. Yep. These guys end up the last guys on contract because they can run around and hit a spot yep. here, hit a spot there. Yeah. Usually, um, got the guys on the radio. They're like, "Hey, we're over here. Can you go dump some there and dump some over there?" And, and it's nice because you can split it because you're doing it manually with your head. Mm -hmm. You can split it in whatever. Oh, I need a little bit here, a lot more there. Yeah. It's not like. It's automated and, oh, I have to have a third or a third and whatever. So yeah. you, you, can, you can do all those different things like that. So how is your, your Bambi bucket actually made? Is it, they, is it like a leather that they're made of? Uh, no, so it, it's called, uh, they'll call it an engineered fabric. So essentially, uh, if you imagine the core of it is like a weave or a mesh of material. Think right. like a door screen. Yep. Um, and our particular, uh, this one actually has two different materials and they're, they're at right angles to each other. Okay. And then, uh, then that material has then overlaid with a, a polyurethane. Okay. okay. So yeah. the inside material is the strength of, the, of it, and the urethane gives it the wear resistance. Okay. And so uh, when the pilots are dragging them through the oh yeah yeah and <laughs> so them down the I mean other people bushes. have tried over the years to make a you know to make a more a cheaper bucket using like PVC etc. But urethane is the everyone finally realizes we've got to go with urethane. Yeah. Um, the beauty with it is. Uh, it's highly resistant to most chemicals. Yeah. Uh, PVC, if you take a bucket with, and make it out of PVC fabric and you run it in retardant, um, by the end of the summer, it's like, it's like plywood. Yeah. You, you, it just loses all its uh, yeah. rigidity. All the plasticizers mm -hmm. get, get out of yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. because your, your buckets have to be able to work with just regular water, like fresh water, salt water, what? uh, gel retardants and uh, foam. foam. Yeah. Yeah. And so those kind of things can be really harsh on it. The other thing which can be harsh on it is over time is sunlight if they're left, uh, like in Australia. Yeah. My goodness, you'll take a brand new bucket, bright orange like that. If you leave it out in the sunlight all summer long, it's amazing how much it's it faded. takes the, the color and of course the plasticizers are coming out. Right. Coming okay. out of it. So that's that's the material, and then we cut it into, uh, depending on the size of the bucket, 16 or 20 panels. Okay. And then each of those panels is then um, we they have a pocket gets put on them. And then those panels are then uh, welded together. Um, these buckets are made with a hot air welding process. Okay. Like you would see, uh, like a beach ball is made with that process. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we also do some radio frequency welding for some of the parts which are welded onto uh -huh. it. Okay. And then during assembly, each one of those where you can see that the word Bambi bucket in the pocket, there's a fiberglass uh, stiffener in there. But right. we call it a batten because that's there. They're like sail battens. Is that those over there? Yep, that's okay. exactly what you're seeing. So the, the, what the function of them is, is to keep the bucket relatively stable um, when it's empty. Right. Um, if you would look at, there's other people who have tried to manufacture buckets without battens. Yeah. And when the buckets are empty, um, one of the pilots described it to me as like flying with a piece of crumpled up paper on a string. <laughs> and it catches the over. air and it goes all yeah. over the place. It's not very stable. Yeah. So this provides the stability to it. Yeah, because I know when we fly them to and from the fire, we'll always um, get what we call a traveler bucket. And we're basically just going to dunk it, put some weight in it, and fly to oh, the if fire. You're, if you're transiting. If you're transiting. So right. without that in it, 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 it definitely flies a lot better with a bit of weight in it, but yeah. those those straps obviously help it fly and, and, empty. And the, and the shape also helps because it will, um, some people will ask, should I fly with it uh, empty? Should yeah. I fly with the valve open or closed? Um, most pilots have tried either way and don't find a significant difference. Right. So they'll typically just leave it closed, but it, yeah. will, it will catch. Okay. Get that nice big bulbous shape and it stays fairly stable. Yeah. So okay. now one of the other things, um, we'd have to go around the other side if you yeah. want to see the weights. Okay. What we're going to see is you see where these metal strips are here. Inside of the, the bucket, 
there are heavy bars, and there are three of them. And you also notice. Like these ones? Yeah, similar, <laughs> but they're, they're, they're even bigger. Oh, goodness. So um, are these just like solid lead, or are they? Uh, no, they're actually steel. Oh, lead okay. is very verboten these days. <laughs> In the beginning, so it yeah. used to be lead shot. Yes. And, and actually, we don't use that anymore. And so it's just steel bars that are then plated. And so you'll notice, um, you see the suspension lines coming down, and then you'll see the webbing we have yep. that connects from the shell of the bucket. Um, and think of the bucket almost like you would think of the structure of a building. Um, the webbing and goes through and is, is like the studs that form the structure. Right. And then the fabric is essentially like the covering, the plywood or yep. the drywall or whatever. But the webbing is really taking the load. But you notice on this side that we have chain. Right, yes. Okay? Yeah. So the whole idea is we want to get this side with more weight on. So also where the chains are is where the weights are. Okay. And so that helps it so it will help it dip. But also when it's flying, that side will always stay low. Right. And it'll keep the bucket from rotating and twisting in flight. Okay. So that provides, because it's a round object and yeah. with no symmetry. <laughs> so it will tend to go all over the place yep. if we don't provide it some. Uh, okay. um, and it's very important that the weights are on the inside. If you put them on the outside, they will catch the air mm -hmm. and you'll start to get uh, instability as well. Spin around, right? We, or every bucket that you make gets tested oh here yeah, before every, it goes out? Every bucket has to go through a full set of tests and we go through them and check everything out. So it's just it. like a set checklist that the, the, yeah. the QA person runs yeah. through? goes through it, checks everything, makes sure everything's okay. Mm -hmm. And then once it's, t then it has to come out of the tank, um, be hung, and then it has to be cleaned afterwards. Right. They clean it, wipe it down, and packed, ready Yeah, because I know that's a big thing over the last few years that I've noticed is that, uh, you know, the, the, the fire units or the ministry units have been very adamant about your bucket has to be pressure washed before you leave site and go to another site to stop the contamination the, the contamination of like, the transmission of the, yeah. the pests and biological like stuff that. Yeah, yeah that's very very yeah. and especially like again if you're working in salt water somewhere it's all very important to make sure you wash it down mm -hmm. you know especially for storage like yeah. long-term storage you know is a big one you don't want the griblies there when you open it up the, yeah. the next time you yeah. go to use it yeah no um, kidding so this is the the bambi max valve correct the, the, the other buckets, or the, your, your original buckets, didn't have the valve, they just had the bladder that just Correct. comes out. Okay. Correct. So why, what is the, the ring that's on the bottom of this bucket for, Mark? Oh, this, because this actually has a set of pumps in it. Oh, okay. So this is a standoff, because otherwise people will just put it right onto the bottom and it'll just suck itself in. Okay. It, it doesn't really work as well as people might assume, because people think, oh, I'm gonna set this down on a, on a the bottom and I'm going to take the weight off the lines and I'm going to use it to fill the pumps. Right. That's fantastic if you're putting it into a stream which is all hard rock yeah. and gravel. There's no way you're going to set this down on a lake. No, you it's know, just going to sink it, into yeah, the sludge. Yeah, I mean picture like, look at your feet and think how much you sink into the sludge in a freshwater lake. Yeah. Now you're going to put all that weight on those little pads, yeah. never going to do anything. Yeah. So why, why would you have pumps in a bucket? Because we've seen obviously you just dunk it under the water. Why would you have pumps in there? Right, and so unfortunately I can't show you because we don't have our setup hooked yeah. up today. But typically what you would do is if you're dealing with shallow water, so... Like a shallow stream or a shallow yeah. pond if that's all you've got around. So like we can start filling the bucket there. Ah, okay, so the pumps are basically be sucking the water in from the right. bottom. So it's a fill. shallow fill capability. Right. And so there's certain locations like Texas is very common. They have tons of lakes which are three feet deep. Ah, right. And so that's a very, very common. Um, there's actually a really great photo somebody took many years ago with Columbia, has a Chinook, and they're in the mountains, and there's this stream coming on, a waterfall comes down, and there's a little tiny encatchment that it's capturing, and then yeah. down to another waterfall, and they're putting their bucket in there oh, and power filling goodness. it out of there. Right, I gotcha. So it's the power fill, the yeah. pumps are basically, rather yeah. than filling so the water from the top, the pumps yeah. are pulling so we, in. We can basically, the it would start from about that kind of level of water, we could fill it. So basically, you need to two feet and you can fill yeah. pretty much any of your size buckets, yeah. even the big ones off the Chinook. Yeah, of course it takes a lot of power. Right. You know, so... Um, and they're electrically driven pumps. Yeah, these are you. electrically driven pumps, yeah. These are DC pumps. So smaller aircraft, it's not a problem. When you get to the larger aircraft, it becomes more of an issue because the primary power is all AC. Right. So their DC side is still as limited as you would find in like a 212. Right. Um, they just don't have a lot of DC power. <laughs> um, so they'll often, they'll have to put a, a power conversion in or look at trying to use AC pumps, etc. Right. As okay. a different option. So you, you can offer these with an AC pump? Uh, we're, we have never made one in the past. We're actually prototyping one right now. Okay. So SEI gave us some cool swag to give away to you guys. We've got 
large adults t-shirt. We've got an adults ball cap and we've got two keychains. So we're going to do two drawers. One is for a t-shirt and a keychain and the second is for a ball cap and a keychain. And the way that you can get into that drawer is by dropping a comment in this video below. It can be anything you want. If you've had any experience with the Bambi buckets, great, stick that in there. If not, stick a comment below, you'll get into, into the draw. And basically on Friday, the 22nd of April, I'm gonna do the draw, put out a video, and announce who the two winners are, and I'm gonna ship you off this free merch so you can uh, go and show your love for Bambi buckets. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen, that is how the Bambi bucket works and how it's made. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, you're most welcome. Much appreciated. All right. You've got a, a fun job here playing fishing uh, man all it, day. It can be very fun. <laughs> Perfect. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.